Assalamu alaikum. Today we'll be discussing about the inguinal canal. In, for understanding the inguinal canal, first we will discuss the attachment of the inguinal ligament. And this diagram. In this diagram, we have pubic crest, a pubic tubercle, obturator foramen, and the ischio pubic rami. This is the ischio pubic rami. And this is the symphysis pubis. Okay, so the inguinal ligament extends from the anterior superior iliac spine till the pubic tubercle. This is the pubic tubercle, pubic crest, obturator foramen, ischio pubic rami, and symphysis pubis. So, from anterior superior iliac spine till the pubic tubercle. Next, actually the inguinal canal is a slit-like passage that extends from the superior deep, sorry, deep inguinal ring till the super, superficial inguinal ring. First, we'll discuss about the superficial inguinal ring. Superficial inguinal ring, I'll be, I will be using its abbreviation as super, superficial inguinal ring. Okay, the superficial inguinal ring lies above your superiorly to the pubic tubercle. This is the pubic tubercle. So the superior superficial inguinal ring will be present superiorly to the pubic tubercle. This is the superficial inguinal ring. Then superficial inguinal ring. Actually superficial inguinal ring is a triangular shaped defect in the external aponeurosis. External oblique aponeurosis. And as it is a triangular shaped, it is actually a triangular shaped. Triangular, as it is a triangular shaped, it must be having an apex and a base. It's, it is, it's, its shape is like this, triangle, apex and a base. In it, its apex is directed superior laterally. And its base is formed by the medial and the lateral curera. I'll show you its diagram. This is the superficial inguinal ring. This is the superficial inguinal ring. As I have told you before that it is a triangular shape defect in the external uh, oblique aponeurosis. So. Okay. This is the external oblique muscle and this is its aponeurosis and this is the defect in the superficial inguinal ring. So it is a triangular shaped defect. It has an apex and its base. Its a base is formed by the medial curera which is, sub, which is attached to the symphysis pubis and the lateral curera which is sub, attached to the pubic crest. And the uh, apex is directed superiorly. Superficial inguinal ring allows the attachment of the external spermatic fascia. Now we'll move towards the deep inguinal ring. Again, I'll be using its abbreviation, deep inguinal ring, deep inguinal ring. Okay, so the deep inguinal ring is actually the opening in the fascia transfer cellus. Fascia transfer cellus is the fascia which lines the transversus abdominis muscle. And fascia transfer cellus, is just, uh, the opening in the fascia transfer cellus is known as the deep inguinal ring. Deep inguinal ring is present between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. So it we will draw over here between the so this is the midpoint and okay. So this is our inguinal canal. And inguinal canal, and this is our inguinal canal, which we can see it is a slit like passage between the superior inguinal ring and the deep in superficial inguinal ring and the deep inguinal ring. And the deep inguinal ring is present between the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. Deep inguinal ring allows the attachment to the internal spermatic fascia in men. And 
internal fascia of the round ligament of uterus in females. Now we'll move towards the boundaries and walls like anterior wall, posterior wall, roof and the floor of the inguinal canal. For that I will draw the muscles. We know that the internal oblique mus muscle fibers move superiorly and medially. So this is the internal oblique muscle. When it reaches well above the inguinal canal, its fibers begin to turn and supply also also protect the roof of the inguinal canal. So these this um, green marker shows the internal oblique muscle and this is the internal oblique muscle. Fibers are turning upwards and backwards and forming the roof of the inguinal canal. Then we'll see the transversal abdominis muscle. Transversal abdominis muscle as the name indicates it is transversely arranged. So this is the red marker indicates the transversus abdominis muscle. And the transversus abdominis muscle also when it reaches well above the inguinal canal, its fibers begin to turn so that it can also merge with the internal oblique and, sub and form the roof of the inguinal canal. These two fibers, the internal oblique fibers and the transversal abdominis, forms and unite and forms the this is the conjoint tendon. Okay, so so this is a picture, and from here we will divide its walls and as it's very clear from here that the anterior wall anterior wall. external oblique muscle I have not uh, made here but it is very obvious that it is it will be present above this to avoid the confusion I have not um, made here okay and anterior wall is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis external oblique aponeurosis and the this is the anterior wall so this is the anterior wall so anterior wall is from the anterior, external oblique aponeurosis and the internal oblique which is taking its origin from the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament okay so this is the inguinal ligament and it is taking its origin from the inguinal ligament and forming the anterior wall so inguinal uh, and internal oblique muscle okay then we'll move towards the posterior wall posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis is formed by fascia transversalis is formed by fascia transversalis and the transversus abdominis muscle. Also, uh, the, it is formed by the conjoint tendon. Conjoint tendon. Which, which reinforces the super, superficial inguinal ring from backward. This is the conjoint tendon, superficial inguinal ring and posteriorly to superficial inguinal ring, conjoint tendon re uh, supports it. Okay. okay. And in the anterior wall, the internal oblique uh, muscle which is taking its origin from the inguinal ligament also supports the uh, inguinal, uh, deep inguinal uh, ring and from the anterior side. This is the deep inguinal ring behind the internal oblique. Okay, then we'll move to the floor.
floor and then I'll tell about the roof. Floor as it is evident from here that the floor is formed by the inguinal ligament. So floor is formed by inguinal ligament and the roof and the roof is formed by the roof is formed by as we can see over here the arch arching fibers of the internal oblique internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle so this was something about the inguinal canal thank you for watching